We are live. So say hello. 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 <laughs> Mum, could you just keep talking while I just keep this going a minute? Just say what you've been doing today, this week. All like, I've been doing is working again, working, working, working. And you've been, been doing some stuff kitchen. on your, don't forget you've been doing some stuff on your kitchen. Painting. So it looks very, very bright now because it's all like a white colour. It's not brilliant white, but it's white at the moment. Um, yes, yeah, so it'd be nice when I can, um, just, uh, it'd be nice when I can start. When it's supposed to be you're all getting fitted in tomorrow, hopefully, if nothing goes wrong. But it's, yes, it'd be nice to get a kitchen back. I've got no cooker, no washing machine. No cooker, no washing machine. <laughs> they took it out on Friday. Um, I had to leave them to it. Um, and when I come back, it was, I thought I was going to have something in, but they just made some of the cupboards up, you know, the skeletons. Yeah. So I've just got some of them made up and that's it. And they took my bloody washing machine out. When I come back, I was a bit shocked. <laughs> Coming back and having no washing machine and no cooker. Okay, I've got it. We are now live. Good. Okay, thank you for that, Mum, for filling in that void. <laughs> <laughs> that is always very stressful when I'm doing it right off the bat like that. Yeah. I apologise for the beginning of my videos because sometimes it ends up being like this at the very, very beginning. I'm just going to shut this door a second. <clears throat> Oh, okay, so why well, caring about your kitchen anyway? Yeah, it's been doing a bit more, done the second coat of the walls and that. So I don't know why, do you know when you, if, I wanted to do the walls, so I've done quite a lot of the wall because, do you know when you see the top, it's going to be hard to sort of like paint on, you know, on, so I thought if I do the walls now with no, nothing on, I thought I'll just go all the way back down. And I know I didn't need to waste the paint on it, but I thought, well, it doesn't really matter because it's going to be struggling to get to the top when the all the covers are going to be So what know, did you do everything that you were wanting to do last week? Remember I said, and you realised what I'm laughing in a minute because you're just going to crack yourself off in a minute. Did you do everything that you wanted to get done this last week? Do you remember when I said, oh, we're going to be accountable for each other? And I was supposed to get all of my quilt blocks done. And you said that you wanted to do your painting. Did you do your painting? I have, yes. <laughs> yes. I think you're wondering what the hell's going to happen. So yeah. do you remember? <laughs> I did manage to get the painting done. Oh! <laughs> to do a banner that comes off here right it says Cassie's trumpet <laughs> oh, so funny. Um, do you know I went to I went to Toys R Us and they didn't have any trumpets and then I went to this other like toy store that's around the corner like 
right by Toys R Us. I'm crying, actually. That's so funny. <laughs> um, and um, they have these little, like, I said, do you have any, like, little musical instruments? She goes, yeah, they're over there. And I'm like, looking. They had, like, saxophones and stuff. And I found one. I found a trumpet. It's a nice one as well, isn't it? It wasn't that expensive, actually. I mean, Neil goes, well, how do you actually hold it? And I'm there like, Neil, it's like, a, I don't know, 25 book trumpet. <laughs> 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 that's, that's the thing. And it gave you like a um, a lesson how to actually play. Do you know that one that they play in the like in the army? That do, 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 that one. Do you know which one I'm on about? It yeah, gave yeah. me the actual thing on how to play that. I'm like, oh, maybe I need to like learn how to play it properly. <laughs> <laughs> Neil said, Neil said, you can't do that. You can't do that on your YouTube channel. People are gonna think you've lost the plot. And I'm not like <laughs> Sorry, that happened a long time ago. <laughs> oh, God, that's so funny, yeah. Yeah, oh, so I'm going to blow your own trumpet too. I know, because I very rarely say, like, I'm a, I am a baby lock educator, um, like, actual baby lock educator, and I do go around and I do, like, you know, teach like sewing classes to like the actual baby block retailers and i very i very rarely say that about myself so i really need to start saying that more often like i love baby block and baby block's my brand and you know i need to start advertising that yes <clears throat> So let's blow my own trumpet. So then this week I managed to finish all of my blogs. Did you even do them? <laughs> oh, <good morning. clears throat> oh, wow. I'm not going to show them all properly because you're going to have to watch the tutorial if you want to see it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you're confused by this podcast, um, yeah, so what we generally do is just have a sewing chit chat. I'm not going to do any like sewing tutorial during this um, podcast. This is all supposed to just be about a bit of a fun, a bit of a laugh with some sewing like thrown in and kitchen reno and gardening <laughs> or like whatever we want to talk about. We're going to talk about, aren't we, Mum? Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad I've got the painting sorted as well. It's really big thing out of the way that yeah yes so how did you break it down did you just think because you actually didn't want to do your painting did you you were kind I of don't, I don't I'm not I don't like emulsioning why I, like, I just don't I, I, I don't don't like emulsioning painting and wallpapering emulsioning and that I don't I don't know I just don't like it would you paper it well, I like wallpapering. I like my paper, don't I? My wallpapering. Oh, I thought you meant you didn't like your papering. I mean, like, oh, you do pretty good for somebody who doesn't like to do your wallpapering. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm after that done. I did the last bit today. Did the second coat today. Finished work at 8 o'clock in the morning. Came home, got bath. Oh no, I didn't. I, I started me. I started the the um because I got a very pale grey and that very very pale white. So I did the walls first, and I thought right, I'll do them. And I did a bit of painting on the doors and that. Then I went and had my bath and everything because I went, had to go back out and get some more of the emulsion. So I had a little walk. I had to walk down there, look around, and got the paint. Walk back home, and then. Got changed to some of my work gear and set to again. Then I thought, oh, right, I've got some time, so I just chilled out for a bit. So, yeah, I've done, I did my goal. I finished it today. <laughs> Anybody else want to play? I'll blow your trumpet. I've got like some people watching right now. Do you need your trumpet blowing? I'll blow your trumpet. <laughs> Let oh. me know what you accomplished this week. Let me know in them comments down below. 
What were you going to say, Mum? I'm going to say, yeah, what, what's everybody else been doing? What, has, has somebody else finished anything or started something? Probably all starting something. Most people don't end up finishing it. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking of that question of the day, which is my question of the day, because like, it was funny because um, I bought a load of candy yesterday and I topped my candy bowl up. And I was wondering if anybody else has candies in their sewing room and if, they, and if, if you do, what kind of candies do you keep in your sewing room? That was my question of the day. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to think about orange chocolate, me. I don't like orange chocolate. It's wrong. I, you know, like Aero. You know, Aero can get Aero, mint or Aero, chocolate or whatever. But it's like... They used to, they used to do Aero orange, didn't they? At one point, didn't they? Yeah. Yes, yeah. They don't yeah. do it anymore. I can't, I can't get hold of it, but uh, Aldi do one. And it's cheaper as well. I don't know if it's a smaller bar, I'm like, but Aldi do one and it's really nice. And there's tennis oh, chocolate it? orange in that. It's like, I never understand, Jack. Do you know when you buy the quality streets and the roses? I hate the strawberry and the orange and then the gooey things in the centre. They're disgusting. They're I the worst to, ones. I used to, I never used to like them, but what, as I got older, I like them. I don't know why. That's it, you get older. You only like that sort of stuff when you get older. <laughs> Just like bushel sprouts. Who likes you? Did you like bushel sprouts when you were younger? No. But you like I love them now. I do, yeah. But you fry them in bacon, though, don't you now? Oh, I've done that. Yeah, sometimes I do that. Yeah. Do you still make stodgy ones? Mm. Stodgy ones? No, no, no. <laughs> stodgy ones? No, I like them. I like no. I like the sort of like near enough raw, basically. Ew. I found some. It's it's funny because I was looking for some content today off the um off the internet, and do you know what? I found this on the yellowpages.com. Can you believe that yellow pages? Fun facts every sewing enthusiast should know. Why why yellow pages? I thought that was bizarre. Yeah. Anyway, so it was going on about the sewing supplies as we know them today are easy enough to come by, but what was done in the ancient times and what are their orange origins? I think it was an origin oranges. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <it's> chocolate. <laughs> chocolate oh, it's oranges. Chocolate. <laughs> Here are some facts about sewing supplies that shed some light on modern sewing. So needles are ancient technology and weren't always metal. About 25,000 years ago, people protected themselves against the cold with fur. They stitched together using bone needles pierced with a hole. Then there must be a really thin needle out of bone. I mean, aren't bones supposed to be really strong? I guess they are, aren't they? Well, yeah, yeah. But to be thin for a needle, though. Yeah, but they won't be like that thin. I don't think they would be. They would have probably like, a like... massive thing. <laughs> 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 they did though, didn't they? They made all sorts of tools and things out of bone and stuff, didn't they? Yeah, I've been watching, see, that was this thing now. Now I'm going to go on a different story like I normally do. I'm going to get in a rhythm now. I feel kind of out of kilter today, and I don't know why. Um, but I've been watching Edwardian Farm. And you said you watched it, but how many years ago have you watched Do you even remember it or not? I remember, yeah, I remember parts of it. So I've got onto this thing about watching, like, about Victorian times and all that, and they've done some really good um, documentaries. You can see some really good documentaries on YouTube. And um, there's this um, one called Edwardian Farm, and I've got into, like, episode four of it, and they're literally, like, historians that have gone, like, back into the um, Edwardian times, and they all, like, live in Kent or somewhere down south. And... Um, they are living like Edwardians. So the, the costumes of Edwardian, like everything to do with the whole thing is Edwardian. Because I was wondering, because it's, it's a 
really long series. And they're like, well, they can't be like staying there. They must be going home and then going back to work, mustn't they? Like to the real time. They can't like it was it must it was done like for over like a year, this thing. Yeah, I don't know. I don't <clears throat> I know what you mean. Do you think they, they did some film? Do you know, like people film and they stay there? I don't Do think they can't be. They can't be. So anyway, <laughs> there's these like three historians. One of them, she pops up quite a lot, actually. I can't remember what her name is. I think she was called Anne something or other. And I've seen her in some other documentaries that I've been watching. So she pops up quite a lot. This this She's like a middle, not the blonde one that we were going on about, not her. It's this well, old lady, she pops up a lot. She's an older lady. Yeah. So yeah. When she was like showing, I think she's doing something to do with lace on this next episode because I wanted to watch it last night. And then I was in bed and it was getting quite late. And Neil's going, turn the TV off, turn the TV And I'm like, no, I want to watch this. You know when you're like getting tired and you want to watch something, but you know yourself that you could have ended up chopping up and someone's saying to you, mm -hmm. like, go to sleep now. And you're like, no, I just want to watch this. And I could so <laughs> <laughs> I didn't end up seeing it. So I ended up just turning it off. So on season on episode five, she's showing how to make handmade Edwardian lace. So I'm oh, quite excited to watch that. Yeah. Quite That'd kind of cool. to watch it. So I have something to talk about today. And then I was just like, I just felt so tired, so I turned it off. But anyway, that is definitely like one to watch while you're sewing. This is Edwardian Farm. I highly recommend it. Just go on YouTube, search Edwardian Farm, and it'll pop up. I think there's about, I don't know, maybe 12 episodes of it. And I love it. Do you know when you start watching something and you get right into it and then it's like, oh, there's no more episodes to watch. It's like, oh, I want to watch that. I want to watch more of it. I don't think I want, I didn't see that one. <clears throat> that the latest no. one. No. Well, I'll tell you what, why don't you watch it sometime this next week so then next Sunday we both have something to relate to and talk about. <laughs> I'll try, I'll try. I'm just, this is that busy week this week. You know, Every week is your busy week. I know, but it shouldn't have been, but it's just like, well, it just happened to be a busy week as well at work. Another thing on that Edwardian farm that was really quite interesting was um, the two guys that were on. So basically, um, they're going through time and everything, and when, as the time's going, they're introducing new technologies and stuff to them, and it's kind of like really exciting and that when they're like, and they just brought out like, the new tractor of the day that came and apparently it was a bit iffy when it came across to like plow in the field but they also use the same tractor in order to use the um you know for belts on things so they could actually drive belts and get things moving quickly and stuff so they had this um <clears throat> i think no that was something else because they have this other machine that, um, so in the UK, I don't know, they don't do this in like Canada or anything like that, I don't think, or in America. But I, I don't know, I mean, correct me if you, I'm wrong, but isn't thatch like a UK thing or not? Thatching. Thatching. Well, they wouldn't have thatching. No, they, they would have had thatching back in the day, wouldn't they? They would have had thatched roofs. I, I, I don't shouldn't. see that because I, I see thatch roofs even today in some like because around the corner from where Neil used to live was like ray green and then some of them houses had thatch roofs. <clears throat> They'll have some here, yes, they do, yeah. And they always have they, they always make um they always had something on the roof as well. You know, they, they yes. used to put something on the roof as well. Do you remember that one, like, on the, it was just off the M55 and it had a thatched roof and every year they did something different where they would have something on top of the roof. Do you remember which one I'm talking about? I think so, yeah, yeah. Like driving no. near to Ribble, is it Ribble Hall or whatever it was called, that place? Oh. But there was like, a, there was a house down there that used to have a thatched roof and they used to have something on top of it that was different. <clears throat> Yeah, they always have something on it, don't they, on the roof? So now people are probably wondering why I should talk about fat roofs and this is a sewing thing. It's because <laughs> the machine that they used to create the thatch, right, was a little bit like a sewing machine, right? So what they'd do is like they'd get like piles of straw and I'd lay it on this table and basically it, it did have like this needle thing and there was like a 
wine and as this guy was like pushing this stuff through like he had to pan to push it through and it was almost like a feed dog on the bottom of a sewing machine as you were pushing it through and as he was doing that somebody would be cranking on a wheel at the other side and it would make this needle go up and down and it was actually um uh, like sewing it, it sewed like a running stitch across oh, the God. actual thatch it was bloody interesting <laughs> oh, then, okay so maybe i need to be eating orange chocolates while i'm watching edwardian <laughs> <laughs> So it's, it was like um, like a treble machine kind of thing then, isn't it? That mm. because they were doing no, but they were doing it with their hands in order to get it moving. They had to do it with their hand. <laughs> yeah, but instead of doing feet, is that being done with that hand on one? Yeah. Because I watched another thing um, on YouTube about. Um, it was called 24 hour in Victorian history or something. I tried to send it to you and it wouldn't let you watch it. And it was about these like English celebrities that had to go back in time and spend 24 hours like living as Victorians. And then they had to do like stuff like that and the workhouses and stuff. That was really interesting. Oh, right, okay. There was nothing much about sewing, but <laughs> I just think that it's things, things to watch while I'm going, okay, this is how I'm going to make about sewing. Things to watch while you're sewing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so come on, viewers, say hi to me so I can see who's watching. They're all pretty shy and they never want to say hello. Oh, that's not nice, is it? I know Cassie, it makes Cassie sad. <laughs> Hello everybody. What have you been up to this week? Yeah, we don't want to know what we what you've been up to. We want to know like did you hold yourself accountable, even though you didn't tell me what you were going to be accountable for this week? Um they're also saying that pins were made from fish bones as well as long long thorns. Imagine oh, taking yeah. some of the thorns out of your bushes and using them as pins. The, well, they're all sharp, aren't they? They really are sharp, then. So they would be. I tell you what, I've got some very. Sh I tell you what would be good is little Sophia's claws. For a minute, they're sharp. When I'm, <laughs> <laughs> when I'm clipping her nails, I might just use them, hold them. <laughs> <clears throat> um, so latter horn and ivory were used. The needles having a round hole on one end or in the middle. What's latter? Is it later or latter? I don't know, I've never heard of it. Horn or ivory, neither. I haven't either. Metal needles were used in the ancient Egyptians from, oh, excuse me, I'm always burping. I don't know what's up with me. <laughs> <laughs> I come on the live video and start burping. <laughs> Oh, Roberta said she was having plan. Um, I was planning on quoting a baby blanket, but didn't even look at it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what to say about that. <laughs> Aww. Who's the baby? Is it here yet? <laughs> <laughs> it's probably why she didn't take a look at it. It's probably not born yet. It's just probably got plenty of time. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Um, so what she was going to, she's making it. She was planning on making a baby quilt, but didn't have time to look, but didn't even look at it. Oh, right. This is this is Roberta, the lady that picks up one every single week that I read. I'm going to chill, I'm going to start doing, is making a list of all of Roberta's um, quilting stuff. And then I yeah. come down like, right, okay then, so have you finished this one? Have you finished this one? Yeah. <laughs> Reverse is the one that's doing the silk quilt, is it? Yes. That's yeah. definitely the one that my mum is very interested in, and you're holding that yeah, one back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been telling people, like, you have to become more interactive with us being live, because it's going to be a lot more fun that way. 
so she says that she's got she's got two great nieces. Oh right. <clears throat> and they get new quilts all the time. Oh. Oh, that's nice. See, I mean, was like looking at um, Facebook page the other day. No, was it this morning? I can't remember anyway. So there was, she was saying that, that this person was saying, oh, can you give us, can you um, show us your pictures of all of your either elephant or llama quilts for babies? And then somebody turned around and said, I wouldn't do llamas. And then I was all like, what's wrong with llamas? <laughs> I'd rather have a llama quilt than an elephant quilt. I know what's wrong with llamas. They're lovely I little love things. llamas. They're really, really gentle as well, aren't they? But somebody was saying, no, they're the ones that spit. Don't they spit? That's a camel, isn't it? No, I think llamas spit as well. Do they? I don't know. <laughs> they've been making me up. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was the, I thought it was a camel that did that kind of thing. I tell you what, um, that just reminds me. I just, I'm having flashbacks. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> so me and my mum went to Australia and um, we rode camels. <laughs> no, I'll never do that again. <laughs> <laughs> was that your idea? Was that my idea? That was your idea. The, the, it's always my ideas, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah because you... In, was it Perth? I don't, like, why... I don't understand, like, I don't really associate Perth with camels, but anyway. Um, <laughs> and then my mum's camel kept on sitting down and it wouldn't move. No, it, wasn't, it wasn't sitting, it kept feeding. And its neck... His neck was like down on the ground because it was grazing on the ground for some reason. And while it was grazing with its neck going down, I was down as well like that. <laughs> and it was like, I was like, my legs were like having to be out straight, trying to go head over heels. Like every time he was down, it was like that all the time. And I could have wrung your neck because you've dropped your blooming camera. Did I drop a camera? Dropped a, don't you remember you dropped a camera we, to, we went back? <gasps> no, yes, I do. Yeah, so I had to suffer all that all the way back again and back again. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't happy. Um, and, um, yeah, they're definitely one of the most uncomfortable things that you can ever experience. Well, it was for me anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. <clears throat> How did we get onto camels? Oh, the llama thing. So anyway, this woman turned... <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> This woman turned around and said, I can't think of anything more fantastic than to do like a llama quilt because basically um, they're in right now and you'll be doing a quilt for a baby with something that's in right now. There's something that actually is something from like 2020 kind of thing. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> anyway, I like llamas. I'm in for the llama quilt. <laughs> Um, so, from 4000 BC, the Egyptians were fastening clothes with copper pins. Metal needles and pins, the wire bent over the form to form the head, were made in Europe during the Bronze Ages. Huh. Steel needles were brought to Europe in the 14th century from the Middle East. The first European steel needle, which were produced in Germany in the 1370s, held the thread in a hook on one end. Do you know what fascinates me is like some of the years that these things were made? Because like what makes somebody think of something like that in 1370? <laughs> well, I suppose at the end of the day, they were, they were obviously making clothing, wasn't they? 
I guess that's the other problem and somebody created a, a how problem. How do they know how to make these things? How do they construct them? I don't know, because when you go into some of these churches and these cathedrals and you like look at it and think, how did they manage to do this in that time? And I know, and no pretty fascinating. I know there's no, no machinery, was there? You know what I mean? To, so know, no brain. It's, I don't know, it's weird. Metal needles with closed eyes were being made in the Netherlands by the 15th century. With closed eyes. In the Middle Ages, pins of the best quality were made of bronze. Iron or brass pins were once luxury items, hence the term pin money. Have you ever heard of that? Yeah. <laughs> Originally, the money given to a woman by her father or husband to spend on small items such as pins. <laughs> to protect their delicate points, pins were being stored in cases from the 1300s. Pin cushions appeared in the mid 1500s. Pins continued to be made by hand until the 1820s when Lemon Wright, an American, developed a machine to do the job. Oh, so they used to make pins by hand and then a machine makes them now. So they must have moulds or something, eh? That would be really interesting to YouTube how pins are made. I don't know, I'm kind of weird like that. I like to watch things like that. <laughs> well, I know just how the how, how would you make things? Yeah, there must be a small thin mould or something, yeah, or not. I don't know, maybe I'm going to check that out, how to make a pin. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to do that. <laughs> Early sewers used thread made from leather thongs, gut and grasses. Nowadays, we mostly use linen, wool, silk and cotton yarns. In Britain, thread of silk or linen, thought su superior to cotton, was sold loose in hanks until spools were introduced in the mid 1700s. Imagine having a spool of thread just loose. Could you imagine that? <clears throat> that wasn't round onto a spool. I know what I'm like when I get like, you know, some thread come off my spools. It goes in the garbage. I'm not messing around with all of that. <clears throat> Have you ever had that happen where a whole load of thing comes off your spool of thread? No. It's a bloody nightmare. In 1844, John Mercer invented the mercenarized mercerization process which strengthened cotton threads and gives them a sheen. Huh. Thimbles were worn on fingers or thumbs, hence the old English name thimmel or thumb stall. So that's one thing I can't get used to. I, I bought a thimble because I was sick of getting my finger like stabbed by the needle and then I just can't get used to wearing a thimble. Can you wear one or not? I can't, no, I can't neither, no. Is it the way we're actually using it? Is there an easy way to wear a thimble? Does anybody else wear a thimble? Who wears a thimble? I end up finding that I'm just like, I put it on my finger and then I end up just, you know, going for another finger. <laughs> <laughs> the first thimbles were conical and fashioned from leather because that kind of makes sense now sin thimbles actually that are made by like um fabric rather than the metal ones where you just put it over your finger i've seen them like hard fabric ones you're like they would be made out of leather these ones that i've seen <clears throat> so later the simple bands that left 
the fingertip exposed, but also made. Examples of these have been found in the Roman ruins of Herculaneum and the Pompeii. I went to the Herculaneum and I love it. I love the Herculaneum. So Neil and I went to Italy. We went to Pompeii, which is like the um, proper, like, um, over-commercialised place. Everybody knows Pompeii. But there's also this, like, little, like, lesser-known place called the Herculaneum, which is even better preserved. And I probably think that that's why they don't do many tours there, because they want to keep the preservation of it. Because we had to um, take a, a train to go there, and we did it on the shoestring. We just went there ourselves. And we got off there, and you end up in the quaintest, cutest little town, like one of them places where, you know, the locals are looking at you like, who are these? Because <laughs> 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 yeah, there's no other tourist about. And then straight down the bottom of this road is, like, the Herculaneum. And I think it was near the sea, actually. And, like, they've got so many... Like, it's all very well preserved and everything. It's, like, it's, it's insane. It's so, it's so amazing. <clears throat> so if anybody ever goes to Italy when you can travel, I highly recommend that you go to Herculaneum. Because that was the time that me and Neil went up to the Mount Vesuvius and it was, like, foggy and misty. And then when we came down... down I was going to say downstairs. When we came down <laughs> the Herculaneum, it, like, ended up, like unclouding over and like a beautiful day it's, oh. like, it's just our look like just our look <laughs> it's typical isn't it <clears throat> it's like me and you things like that happen to me and you i know the english were making dome shaped thimbles from the early 1500s so sometimes learning some history is the best way to advance your knowledge and skills in a hobby. Sewing is a deep, rich and varied history that is studied all over the world. There you go. Some facts apparently that you should, you should know about sewing. <clears throat> Does anybody wear a thimble? I asked that. Nobody got back to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't wear a thimble, Cassie. Move on. <laughs> uh, so I was cleaning out my cupboard the other day. I'm going to switch cameras. <clears throat> And I oh, found some nice. of my samples. Oh, they're nice. They are, aren't they? And what I do like is this particular one. Yeah. I'm trying to like <laughs> find out where the camera is. Oh, that's really nice, that. Isn't it? It matches my nails. It does, doesn't it? Yes. I think that this is definitely from one of them books as well. I don't know where I found the pattern from. It's in one of the um, pattern books that I've got. It's really, <clears throat> really cool. That, that's really, really effective, isn't it? Oh, so Roberta says that when she does sashiko, sashiko quilting, she uses one. Do you know what a sashiko quilt um, sewing is, Mum? No. <clears throat> Basically, it's like a, um, it came from, like, I think it's a J Japanese thing. And it's basically like um, a, a thick running stitch that you put through um, fabric of, like, your quilting. And Baby Lock actually do a sashiko machine that actually does it for you. Um, uh, um, it's, it's really amazing, actually, that, um, that stitch. It's been very popular this year, this sashiko sewing. So just to let you know, Roberta, Babylock actually has a machine that can actually do that for you. So you might want to check it out and see what you think of it. <clears throat> so this is all paper pieced, I think. It has to be. It's too perfect looking. <laughs> I thought this is on par with like what I was doing in the last tutorial with the paper piecing and stuff. So just showing how intricate that you can get with your like paper piecing like quilting. And then I sewed the edges around here with um, 
the um, baby block serger. It's the, the wave stitch on the serger. So it's, it's like two tone. See yeah. that? Yeah. It's kind of cool. So I like, I'm always one for like teal and, well, teal in general. And then I just did like this, like, um, this brown colour. It's, um, it's a really good thread that I use actually. Like, where is it? <clears throat> It's this one right here. And it's kind of got, so I'm going to see if I can, it's not going to show up, but it's kind of like a wool. It's kind of puffy. So as you put it in the serger, it's, um, it's Aeroflock Madeira thread. I'm not, I'm not sponsored. I'm not sponsored. I'm just showing you. I don't get paid, um, but I put it in my serger and um, it creates this lovely like fill. So when you put it in your serger, it fills like right up and it looks absolutely amazing. Right, that's a pretty colour as well, isn't it? It is, I love the orange and the teal together, it's really pretty. And that, that white actually has a pattern in it, but I don't think you can see it. Would you do a quilt in that? design that would take ages and then i've got this one here this one's That's... more like that scrappy thing that i did that time yeah i like them i like that and then what i did here was like i was demonstrating all the things that you can do with like because this is just a um a decorative st stitch on the um baby block soprano there yeah, that's really pretty that I like that. And I love using the very I got into a thing like once over where I was literally just using variegated thread all the time. It's a great way to use your um your scraps. scraps up. Isn't it? Yeah. And then there was this one here. And I love this stitch. That's this is cool. the it's good, isn't it? That's like it's just a flat lock stitch on a serger. I think this is a flat lock stitch on a serger. And it literally opens, you open it out and it creates this stitch. So it's just showing that you can actually piece using a serger. And then I I don't think I used it. Can you see the difference between this? See how many, like there's a little bit of a gap in here? Yeah. And then when you use like this, fills it in a lot more. And then I've got my, I'll hold it further down. My little tea towel I made. It's cute, isn't it? It is, and I put the prairie points on. I love doing prairie points. Has anybody done prairie points on anything? I've done this on the edge of a quilt as well, and it looks really cool. So I always end up thinking, oh, damn it, I wish I brought that. I've got a, a little quilt that I did with Earl's name on it, and that's all got prairie points on the edges of it. It looks really cute. Yeah, it's and there's, some, there's some embroidery on this. That's lovely, that. That's so pretty. Oh, oh it's gorgeous. Should I blow my trumpet? <laughs> no, yes. <laughs> and then I'll show you a block for my quilt. It's good, isn't it? It's lovely. <clears throat> so this is the quilt that I'm currently working on right now. Oh, but you really, <clears throat> but you really chuffed with that, aren't you? I am. I'm actually quite impressed with how it's turned out because I, I did, at first I didn't want it to look like a um, traditional quilt and I was worried about having a motif in the centre and I was thinking, oh, well, I'm not going to end up with a motif in the centre, but now I I, I have because it's like this, this star, isn't it, almost here? It reminds me of one of those, do um, you know those ones you buy, you buy for the garden or something, or a child, and you blow oh, it? The, um, um, like a pinwheel. 
that's it. Yeah, yeah. So the beauty of this was is that I, I didn't know what the design was going to turn into. I was just I like flying on the seat of my pants with this one just to get a YouTube stuff done. And it, I'm really quite impressed with how it's turning it was like, out. It was it was just like putting them down on the floor and seeing which way they would go right, wasn't it? Wasn't it? But also I didn't want to get so stuck into the like design process of everything all the time. Do you know when you're just like Oh, I'll change this and change this and change this. Do you know when I was doing like the um the paper piece and stuff, I was like, do you know what? I just need to just stop and just like this is as I'm going to do. And that's one of the reasons why I like doing the YouTube tutorial, really, because then it forces me to stop and move on to the next stage. Because now, like, this is the the block, but like the whole quilt is going to look entirely different as well when I get all these blocks together as well. Yes. Yeah. It looks wonky, but it isn't. Let me just move it back. No, that's the way it's supposed to be, isn't it? All offset and that. I think it looks really good. But do you know, just doing that basic design, when, when people probably think, oh, right, that doesn't look very much, does it? Do you know? But you but didn't. You... you didn't, because I remember when I was like showing you the design, you were like, oh, OK. Yeah, I know, I know, but when you put, would you remember when you started throwing it down the floor, says, no, don't do it that way. And, you know, we were like, like together thinking, no, that, that, you know you what I mean? When we was like, you know, you were. Well, yeah, because um, there was like these two different okay. colours here, like the blue and that, that like, that taupey colour. I don't, it's funny because this colour takes on a different colour depending on what colour's next to it. Have you noticed that with fabrics? Sometimes it picks out, like, because now it's like next to this pink, it looks more like of a pink colour. And yeah. sometimes you put it next to another colour, it draws out another colour with it. Yeah, but, but yeah, this, these parts here are all the bedding sheets. Right. And then the bits at the, in the corners here as well. Because I couldn't do all entirely out of bedding sheets. But do you know, just from that design, you know, from the picture that you made, you know, then making the pattern up and thinking, oh, what am I going to do with it? How am I going to, you know, make the actual, you know, the pattern from the, the bits that you had, you know, just throw, put them on the floor and then ma manipulating them around. You so know? the one thing I've been thinking about, because I'm going to have to start thinking about it as well, is how am I going to quilt this? Like, what design am I going to put in it? to quilt it. You can do what by using your rulers. Well, I am going to use my rulers, but I just don't know, like, what to do. I'm almost thinking I need to do some sort of design in the middle here in order to highlight this a lot better. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then um, I do have my thread for this, which is going to be this colour. What's so it's, what it's, very, it's variegated, so it changes colour. Oh, right, lovely. Um, so I think it goes from like pinks to whites. Is there a little bit of blue in it? I don't think so. It's like very taupey colour. Oh, yeah, it's nice. So that's the colour I've decided to go with this. And then also when I was, like, looking um, the other day, I did buy this. Again, not sponsored or paid what or whatever. It? It's a pounce. So it's, like, it's it's you've got, like, chalk, and you put chalk inside of the pounce. And then you use like a stencil and it's so you can use it jot on your design here and you like you pounce it like you stencil on the design and then you can like do your free motion quilting. So I wonder, I could almost do my own free motion quilting design. Oh, okay, right. But does it have to use my it? pounce? 
but I've never used it. It's literally stayed in its little packet for I don't know how long. <laughs> Has anybody <laughs> used a pounce? Let me know if you've used a pounce before with your quilting and let me know how it went. Because like, I don't know, I'm almost thinking, is it gonna like, cause it's chuck. Is it gonna like, is it gonna rub off easily? It should do, shouldn't it? Well, I wanted to stay on long enough so I can actually, you know. Well, has well, it got different designs to it then or something? Is it just, I don't understand that. So, I, well, that was it. I was trying to find my um, stencil that actually goes with, let me change my, um, my camera back over here so you can see my beautiful face. <laughs> So there's a stencil, you buy like plastic stencils and they have like the um, quilting design on the stencil. So a stencil that you would like, do you like if you were painting something and you had like a plastic stencil and you would like dab it on. So these stencils you would use, I'm wondering if you could actually just use a regular stencil. I don't see why not. And then like um, and you pounce the chalk onto the stencil I don't know if you swipe it or pounce it. Like, I've never used it before. Um, and then you would, like, use the marking that it's left, because it would just leave the marking of the stencil. And then you would just go around with your machine and just follow the line. So I've never marked my quilt, ever. I don't mark them. I generally just go with the flow and just do it. But I'm wondering whether... I should mark this one so I can do a lot more like of an intricate design. Because uh -huh. also other people use like them friction pens where, do you know, they, you, you put heat on it and the iron off, but the only thing is with them is that they, like, they come back again in like negative weather. So in like minus 20, all the markings come back on the quilt. I remember somebody telling me that um, they, did a whole um they did a whole quilt and they went somewhere really cold and then they, they came to class with it and then they were showing it and then all the markets won the quilt she was mortified oh. oh. <laughs> but they go away again with heat but it's the fact they did never really disappear and i think there's a wash away marker where it'll like wash away like when you did sewing like with clothing like what did you use did you use did you use any like markings, marking things? Um, Let's see if I've got any of my other marking things. <clears throat> no, we used to use. You no, know, we used to do. Um, we used to tack. Do you know, like if we had darts, we used to tack it with a different colour. You know, like a red. Because did you not use one of these once over or not? Like, and they have like, you know, the tracing, the carbon paper where you yeah, would like, yeah. you'd roll over, wouldn't you, and mark? Yeah, no. I used to do it the old fashioned way, me. And like, if there was a dart or something, or you had um, like, you know, the dots where you had to gather something up or something like that, you, you used to thread, just do a thread and just knot it slightly. So you know that you wouldn't it wouldn't move. So it was slack. So that's how I used to do it. Like years ago. And there's some pens where you would like you just like mark it and then I think these either rub out or the iron off. And then I like this one. This is like a chalk one. And you just like, you press this open and it, it ejects the chalk. So this is like a pen. But the only problem with these is it's too thick sometimes to go into the area that you want to mark, which is a shame. But if it was any narrower, then it would probably just like break all the time. And that came with like a pack of like, of a different coloured one, so you've got like the red, the blue, as well as the white. They almost need to do a green chalk because I really think that most people like don't necessarily use green. And um, what other things do I have? And then 
I have these. Is this a wash? This is a washout marker, but I find that they dry out. Is it dried out? <laughs> she says that and then it's working. <laughs> Maybe I need to use this. See what I mean? I have all the tools sometimes and I don't use what I actually have available to me. And another one that I found really useful was this one. Was it this one? So there's this one here that has like chalk inside of it and then it's got like a wheel. <laughs> You're like, Cassie, why have you got all this stuff? You never use it. <laughs> and then just regular chalk. Yeah. No, we have another one. I know I've got another one. There's another one somewhere. There's another one a bit like this. <laughs> that looks like a <laughs> lipstick. So I try and keep them all together in my little bin and I keep my little bin by my cutting table where I know I'm going to use everything. <laughs> What do you guys use to mark? I want to know. I'm nosy. Do you even mark? <clears throat> um, oh, my other one is. You've got all these little gadgets, haven't you? <laughs> stuff and I don't think I use half do you know what I think I forget that I've got half of the stuff that I've got that's the problem if I'm honest I don't know why I'm wiping my nose today a lot <laughs> I tell you what I do need is more rotary cutter blades I didn't realize I was running out I ran out the other day. Did you? Yes. Because <laughs> look what I did. I don't even know if you're going to be able to see this. Uh, can you see that? There you go. Can you see that? I split it. I split the blade. Gosh, how did you do that? In the... Well, it was getting blunt for a start, and then I was getting frustrated. So then I applied way too much pressure on it to cut the fabric, and then I just I split the blade. I'm like, whoa, whoa, Cassie. So then they're like, where are my new blades? And I've got no new blades. Oh, God. So what did you do? Did you well, I went up? to Michael's. I went to Michael's and they've sold out of them. I'm like, don't you start. Don't you start. And I'm like, I don't want to. There's another store that I wanted to go to, but I just know that they're so expensive from that place. So I'm, I'm just waiting for them to. Maybe I should, that's what I should do is see if I can find them at a different Michael's, maybe. There's not just one Michael's in the whole of Blooming Edmonton, is there? <clears throat> Yeah, so I need to get some more blades. Is there another one in that winter, then? There's loads of them. So there's my oh. other one. Looks like a lipstick. Oh. And that's the same again, where it's got like a little blade. This is one of my favourite ones, but again, this one is like way too thick sometimes to actually go in between a ruler to mark things. And I think I've actually taken like, you know where I've been like, it doesn't want to zoom in. I've taken gashes out of it because I'm trying to force it into an area that it doesn't want to go into. There you go. What's in Cassie's little bins? I'm showing you. <laughs> I must admit, this is something I've not really used that much and I don't understand why. They're quite sharp. This is another thing that you don't want to wear around your neck because they hurt. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Oh, and look what I've just found. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Told you just don't use them. I did see some 
rose gold ones. Oh, They're all man. Gray. Yeah. I just don't understand how you're supposed to use them. Oh. I'm sighing now. Maybe I should do a segment called useful sewing. Oh no, useless things that I've purchased for sewing video. But it's always handy to have them in, I suppose, because you think, oh, I've got one of them. I could use that. I think there was one time when I was just buying everything and everything, and I think you were uh, like, oh, do you need that? <laughs> Just found some more needles. Should you have a look at something? I think that's for something for my sewing machine. Anyway, I'm sure this is highly fascinating for everybody to watch right now. <laughs> You're sorting your tub out. Yeah, I'm just like cleaning away. <laughs> So that was something that I bought out of the bargain book and I don't even know what I even, like it was that lacy stuff with like, I don't know, it just seemed really cheap and I didn't want to leave it in the store. And so I have all of these little trims and I never used them. I've got a whole bucket of like trims like wrapped around a lollipop stick. I never use. <laughs> it might come in handy sometime. I know, but I've got to use it. Otherwise like it's not coming in handy. Look, little more buckets. They're just like trims. I need to get using them. I think I just sometimes think, I think, oh yeah, that'd be really cool. But then in that grand scheme of things, they don't end up being as awesome as what I originally thought they were going to be, you know? This is one of my favourite tools. And I forget that I've got it. It's so like you, can press, you can press a seam. What was that? <laughs> I've got a use on wallpaper, only for the seams that wallpaper can make sure they're all nice and flat. <laughs> Do you want to borrow it? Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this is so you don't have to um, use an iron. You can just like press it down. Because they call what they call clappers or something like that. Them hot. They were like a, not a heart. They were like just a piece of wood where you would like, you, so you would press something and use the clapper on the top of it, and it would create a perfect seam. It'd press your seam like forever. Oh, I don't know. Not, not I'm sure they're called clappers. Anyway, this is obviously getting rather boring. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear. So I don't know what the beginning of this live stream's like. Maybe it'd be like it's gonna be like me and you just like going like this. <laughs> because I stopped it and then started it again. So I don't know how bad this is gonna be at the beginning of this stream, but anyway, I'm gonna keep it. <laughs> it might be like one week where we flow seamlessly. <laughs> So anyway, question of the day is, do you keep candy in your sewing room? And if you do, what kind of candies do you have? I've got toffees. Do you want one? <laughs> anyway, let's see about, where's the streaming thing? Okay, so bye. Bye, Mum. Oh, bye. Bye-bye. Bye bye, everybody. That's a bye from her, and it's going to be a bye from me. Bye, guys. <laughs>